Okay, so today we're going to look at the King Air 350i in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yeah, as you can see straight away, it's a twin. It's got two engines, two turboprop engines. And it's one of the more complicated aircraft to operate. So if we go and look inside, you'll see why. <laughs> there's an awful lot of switches and things. And there's a lot overhead as well. We're not going to worry too much, though, because a lot of it is on inoperable in the stock version. This is the stock version that comes with Flight Simulator. But we're going to have a basic look through how to get the aircraft up in the air, go fly a circuit, see how it behaves, and then bring it back. So we're at Santa Barbara. As you can see, it's a beautiful looking aircraft. It's very shiny. Um, so yeah, we'll get it up and running. And we'll see how we do that. So we'll remove the yoke just so we can see what we're doing here. So first things first, we're going to turn on the batteries over here and turn on the generators. Turn on the avionics master power switch, which set powers up the center thing here. Uh, auto, we arm the um, ignition. We then start the engines, essentially. And you will hear them fire up and you will hear a warning over here. Now, by default, when you get into the aircraft, the condition, the fuel condition, is halfway for both engines, which essentially gives them some fuel. To stop okay. the buzzing, we need to increase the throttles to idle, which we're just doing. You'll notice that warning has gone away now. So now it's just warning us about the pitot heat and the ignition switches. So the, it's because the ignition is on. So pitot. So while we're waiting for the engines to spool up, we can go and turn on some lights. So we'll have the nav lights on, the recognition lights on, the beacon lights and the strobe lights. And we're just waiting for the engines to come up to speed. Give it a few seconds so we can turn the starters off now. And the warnings have now gone away. Okay, so we have the aircraft running. You'll notice now if we pull the throttles all the way back, we get the warning again. If we increase them, the warnings will go away. Okay. So turboprops do not like to have the throttles pulled completely back to idle. There's the, the takeaway from that. Not while on the ground anyway. OK, so let's explain some of these levers. So these two, two levers are the, the throttles, obviously, because you can see the tooltip telling you that. This is the prop condition, so that's the how much the prop is attacking the air in front of it. Now I've got that mapped to a button so I can do it without looking without looking down so we can move that all the way forwards and you can hear the roar of the air coming past the, the blades now so we can also pull the engine back a little bit now yep so without the propellers forcing air into the engine we were getting warnings Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Okay, so fuel condition. We can push that all the way forwards for both engines. And you can hear a change in tone again of the power increasing. Okay, so we're now going to come off the wheel brake, or the parking brake, I should say. The parking brake is a little plunger down here. We can put the yoke back on and we can go for a fly. So we'll turn left here. So we're rolling. So the takeaway there to get the engine started is you've got to arm the ignition system then fire the starters once the engines are running you can switch the starters back off you also need positive pitch to force the air pressure into the engines otherwise you get warnings 
So let's get the view centered up. We can press space to sit up in our seat so we can see where we're taxiing. And we're going to lower the flaps. If we go and have a look at the flap setting down here. Oops, I need to look where I'm going really, don't I? But when I'm moving the flaps, you will see this lever is moving through several positions. So I'm going to go for one setting of flap to take off. So we're going to turn left here. We're at Santa Barbara Airport, by the way. I'm going to tilt the camera slightly down so you can see the numbers on the head-up display as we take off. So coming around onto runway 25. Okay, full throttle. Giving it a boot full of right rudder to hold the centre line to begin with. Because you've got two engines to fight against, remember, with the torque. It picks up speed incredibly quickly. Because remember we have the both engines, or both propellers, biting into the air. We rotate at about 90. It's a big heavy plane, you have to remember that. Gear up, we can retract the gear on this aircraft. It's very slippery through the air, therefore it's very fast. Flaps up. I think quite a lot of elevator feeding in to hold the nose up until the speed increases even further. So this plane can travel at well over 200 miles an hour. OK, so we are going to turn around to 70 degrees. So let's begin our turn. We'll bring the engines back to 75%. And just looking down here, we're going to feed back the propeller pitch similarly to about 75%. Continuing our turn. About a thousand feet. We'll climb to about 1500 feet on the downwind leg of our, our little circuit here. But even with the throttle and the pitch pulled back, look, it's still wanting to accelerate. It's a very, very fast, slippery aircraft. It's a bit of a different beast to some of the others because it's obviously got this electronic cockpit. So we're going to feed in some elevator trim just to level us out now. So you can see you can quite happily cruise at 200 knots. We're not at full throttle. We're not at maximum pitch on the propeller. Let's have a look outside. Just flying downwind of the runway. We'll come back in a moment. It's very, very docile to fly. You can see how stable it is. The, your biggest problem, to be honest, is slowing down. Because it's, it, because it's so sleek. And also, there's a bit of a bug in flight sim. They've addressed it to an extent. You should be able to feather the propellers on these big turboprops and use them as air brakes, which is what the, you know, the real pilots do. But it's not modelled, or it didn't used to be modelled. We'll find out in a moment if it's modelled well any in it these days. So we're just flying away. We're going to turn back now and come back towards the airfield. So we're going to start slowing now. Landing gear. Landing Notice if I pull the throttles all the way back, we get a warning about the landing gear. Again, it's the whole thing. Turboprops don't like to run on idle power. So we're descending slowly. And turning back towards the runway. 
So you have to be mindful of your altitude and your speed, knowing that you're not going to find it easy to lose speed. Okay, so we've overshot the turn slightly, again because, as I mentioned, we're fast. Landing gear. Okay, so let's look out over the nose. And we're within range of the flaps now, so down come the flaps. Landing gear. Landing and again, it wants the gear down as well, so down comes the gear. And you can hear the, the extra air pressure. So again, we get the mouse out of the way. We're slowly going to bleed off speed, we'll feed in a little bit of power. We can sit up in the cockpit and look down at the instruments. It's very stable, very placid. So the speed is slowly bleeding off. We want to stay at about 90 knots. coming gently in, giving a little bit of back pressure to keep the nose balanced. Just let it fall gently onto the wrong way and flare it out. And we're down. And then we have reverse pitch on the propellers, which we can use to slow down in a hurry if we need to. So I should have just engaged that to show you it. Added with the wheel brakes, we can stop remarkably quickly if we choose to. So then we'll roll off the runway, lift the flaps as we do so. And we can taxi back. So that's the, the King Air in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's a twin turboprop. There's a lot to, more to it than I have shown you. But hopefully this flight has been a good taster to take it in the air, take it for a fly and go and explore. The biggest difference you're going to find is the systems. It's a touchscreen. So the one tip I would give you that could take you an awful long time to find out is you'll find you'll be wanting to change things like the CDI mode or the navigation flight plan. There is a menu button on this central console. Most of it's inoperable, but the menu button works. When you press it, you get all of your options Yeah, for programming flights. And again, like I said, it's a touch screen, so you can do all kinds of things with it. OK, we can go back to a full screen. We can go and program the comm radios, for example. It's, it's very, very cool. Yeah, get how that works. OK, I'm not going to get into it today. So there you go. Obviously, shutting the plane down is just the reverse of what we did to power it up. You would go and restrict the fuel to the engines to run them out of fuel, then obviously switch off the ignition, disarm the igniters, and then you're away. OK, so I'm going to leave it there. So. Go and have a play with the King Air, it's great fun, it's a very smooth plane to fly. And the master control panel for the autopilot works almost the same as everything else, so all the, the familiar options are here to do with controlling the, you know, the uh, altitude hold, nav mode, approach mode, everything else, it's all there. The altitude, you know, flying to a target altitude at a, 
a vertical speed. It all works the same as the G1000 almost. Okay, so there you go. That's the King Air in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I will stop recording there.